Good morning, my friends. Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> Who's ready to paint? I wonder how many of you paint along with me. <clears throat> if you ever do, I would love to see what you're painting. I love looking at art. Good morning. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hi, Laura. Hi, Susie. <clears throat> Good morning, Shelly. Good morning, everybody. How are you? It's nice to see you. I wish you were all here with me. Good morning, Ellen. So this morning in my Inspiring Art Group, we've been doing a challenge. Um, hi, Gashi. Um, we've been doing a challenge this month um, to try and get everybody painting every day or mostly every day. <clears throat> and I've been, uh, one of the challenges, the, this week's challenge is figs. So I'm going to paint figs because I am absolutely loving the color palette. Um, it's challenging, but I love the subtle shifts in color. So let me show you. Um, I probably have painted figs before. But I love painting the same things over and over and over again. I never get bored painting anything. Good morning, Ellen. Okay. Let me show you this a little bit better. I feel like I'm far from, I feel like I'm off center here today, but, um, so here's the reference image and I can share this for anybody who's not an inspiring art if you want to try this. So I'm not organized to paint at 6 a.m. I have to go to work at 8. Oh my gosh, 6 a.m. So you're out west, huh? <coughs> it's 8 here and, um, Yeah. I don't know. I paint a lot at 6 a.m., but not before work. That would be, whoops, a tricky one. Okay. Oops. <laughs> I'm getting text messages. So we're getting ready. Um, my I have my artwork at a place called the um, Academy of Notre Dame de Muir. It's a, an art show that they do. It's actually their fundraiser for the school. And the, the like, gala opening party is on Friday evening. And we're going with Stephen, who has been my art mentor, and and his girlfriend Laurie, um, to the event. We were figuring out where we're going to go to dinner, which is really fun. But I love doing things like that. It's one of the fun things of doing art is getting to go and meet people and see my work hanging in with all kinds of art. I love to look at artwork, everyone's artwork, any age, any person. I just love, love it, which I do want to try to go to some galleries this year too, something I rarely get to do. All right, so back on task here. So, um, um, <laughs> Anita was wondering when, when she was painting one of these, of the figs, how to get her darks really dark. And I couldn't quite remember. Sometimes I paint things, I mix colors, and, and then I can't, not sometimes, usually I can't even remember what I did. It's just kind of intuitive, but I thought if we did this this morning, it'll help me think about how I create the dark darks. And then, um, I love how, like, see how the light's hitting on that fig or in any of the spots. And it just, it's, I don't know. It's just that color that you can't even say what color is that. Is it a gray? This almost looks like it has a little green or a little reflection of that turquoise in it. I don't know. So we'll just play around. Let me see. We can't get fruit in the green cardboard. Oh, you can't. Oh, I still do. I just got, I've been saving mine. I have a huge stack of them. Lots of places here in Lancaster still um, sell them in these containers. And some of them, they keep their containers. Other people, um, they let you, let you have the containers. So they're still around. Yeah, I have a huge stack. It drives my husband crazy. He's like, why do we need all these containers? But I'm like, I'm afraid someday we won't be able to get them anymore. And I love I love the color of them. I love what the fruit looks like coming in them or vegetables. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it very loose. Let me just kind of block in where this is and not get too precious about anything. Um. A little lower here. Might as well just. Doesn't matter if it goes off. I had gotten out a larger board. I was going to do it on an eight by eight, but I didn't have a raised panel, so I'm just doing a little six by six raised panel. 
So how is everyone doing this morning? Yeah, I love them. I hate that they don't use them anymore. I would think that they actually would be great for the environment. Like they're, they're literally like made out of paper. I think that yeah, they'd be better off selling more things in them. Right? Um, this goes over the edge. Yeah, when I go into like the, the market by me, I'm always in there like moving their fruit around. They never they never seem to mind. Because I do always buy stuff too, but I love to take photos of like repeat pattern of like all the boxes full of things. I don't necessarily always paint them, but um oops, they're so cool looking. These are all getting a little too blue, but that's all right. I can make it any color and have it turn out cool, I think. What color is the transparent blue you just used? Ellen, um, I think this blue I have on here. I have ultramarine violet, manganese blue hue, and ultramarine blue. Good morning. What's the name of the farmer's market you go to? My friend sent me a link to one that she really wants to visit. Oh, it's um, Lancaster Central Market. If if your friend's coming to Lancaster, or if you are, not to be missed. You should go to Lancaster Central Market for sure. When are you going to be in Lancaster? Are you coming to Lancaster? Yeah, I go to market pretty much every Saturday morning, at least if I'm home, I go. Sometimes I'm not around, but usually I am. Oh, you're welcome, Ellen. So when you think about it, figs really probably aren't purple. They're like a really dark blackish kind of color they even have i would say i'm going to get out my um magenta they're actually probably got a lot more magenta in them than purple like that color we're planning a trip together <clears throat> to go up in that area and she really wanted to visit that farmer's market we haven't set the date yet that will let me know and we'll cross paths that would be fun um yeah i love central market and yeah, it's, I think it's unique. Like I don't, I don't know that it is good, but I've never been to any market like that anywhere else. All right, let me push that way back. May I'll try a little bit of brown. I don't know if I like that. Let's see what it looks like. Um, And this is really dark in here. So I'm looking where my dark darkest areas are. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, my friend Beth Bath is having a workshop, or she's teaching. Or like reductive painting method here in Lancaster on Saturday and she wrote to me and said she has a couple spots left if anybody would want to go learn from her anyone who lives around here Ellen says I was having trouble with a fig shape too too round too symmetrical too everything yeah um something else I thought would be a good exercise to do with these would be even to zero in like that much on it and try painting it so you're not thinking about the box of shapes so much. Sometimes when I'm painting and I find like the shapes or I always say that to the two, two something, but I never know it's to what. Um, if I narrow it down and zoom way in and try painting it, sometimes I get over that fear of whatever it is too much of. Do you know what I mean? Does that make any sense at all? 
but I get like that too. You know, I always say it's too something, but I don't know what. So there's a little shadow down here. I don't want to forget the shadow. I'm just going to put that in blue. Um, so you see, it's so very loose. I'm going to use more of this magenta. And this is challenging because it's so very few highlights and it's a very, very dark subject. Oh, Ellen, it's in Rothsville. She has a studio there, which is near um, that really good ice cream place that I can't think of the name of right now. Um, it's near um, Fox Creamery. Oh, I need to pull this back out. I have a little colorful bit here and here make them green I would love to love it if you could show the fig reference but I've never seen fresh figs now oh, they're so pretty aren't they I will I will put it on my website what should I do the background um, I need it to be a little bit of something and I'm going to try to keep it kind of cool so I think I'll do it in my manganese blue hue. I do that a lot when I want things to kind of go toward white. And it's more at this stage, like making sure that most of my, my board, my uh, panel is covered with some kind of medium because I don't really go back in with much medium after this. I paint mostly with just paint right from the tube. Um, no, wait, let me push. Make this a little bit darker here. So I remember where I'm at. This has a bit of a dark edge. This whole painting really is pretty much darks dark darks that looks festive all right I'm closing up my medium cleaning up my palette I'll get out my pigment sticks and then we'll mix colors so where's everybody listening from tuning in from this morning when I say that, I always think, is that the right thing to say? You're not really tuning in. That You'd be tuning in on the radio, right? I don't know what it's called on, on your phone, on the Internet. I don't know what it is. All right, I'm using my pigment sticks just to get those fun splashes that I hope stick around. Sydney, Katie, Texas. Oh, Sarah, that's okay. Better late than never. I've only just gotten to the pigment stick part. Alberta, Canada. That's that fun bit of green there. This even does here. Um... It's nearly midnight. We're at Queens, New York. Allie, how are you, Allie? Alberta, Canada. Or by Kareen, where, where is it mid nearly midnight? I didn't see where you were from. Albuquerque, Fairhaven, Massachusetts, Northern Michigan, Ontario. Hi, Sheila, how are you? some of the red, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Sydney, Sydney, wow, yeah, your time is so 
it's the other side of the world, right? Isn't that amazing that you're watching me paint on the other side of the world? That's just so amazing. What other color? I need a little bit of gold in Australia. Yeah. Did I not say Australia? So my husband went skiing with um, my son and a neighbor. They went to Colorado and just got back. And while he was gone, I um, I was watching television, which I don't do very often. But I watched the TV show Julia about Julia. Um, and her name just fell out of my head. You know, Julia the chef, Julia Childs. Oh, my gosh, it was so good. Have any of you seen it? down way down under right okay so I'm mixing purples those kind of light blues that look like highlight areas I need a shadow I want a whitish mostly white background I love how that looks and then I need my kind of tealish turquoisey colors for my box I'll pull this down <clears throat> get the palette knife out um okay so for my very very darkest darks um, I'm going to take some purple. Yeah, but Sarah, not the movie. It's a TV show. So my friend had told me to watch Julia, Julia and Julia. It's like a TV show, I guess. Or no, a movie. And um, I found the wrong thing and it was a TV show on HBO, I think. So I put a little bit of black in there, and I'll put a little bit of raw umber in there, too. And it, only, they only made the first eight episodes so far, the first season, and I loved it. And now they're um, creating the next season. So if you want anything fun to watch, it's quite inspiring. Um, so I like that dark. So I would say that's got a lot more red in it than it does purple, but I'm going to pull a little bit of that down and add a little bit of um, ultramarine blue into it. Which will throw it a little more purple. So I'll make more reddish and maybe a more purple line of color going down here. So now I want to lighten that a little bit. Um, as I look at the little bit of lighter color, I think I'm going to add, um, this is my Indian yellow. <clears throat> it's one of those instances when you think that they're purple pigs. Oh, can you please pull the camera back? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. Yep. Is that better? <clears throat> That's very nice. And I mixed up just a few um, grays up above here to neutralize my colors. So if your colors are too saturated, too bright, you can um, make them less bright by adding a little bit of gray into them. I think I need to add a little of this. It's a really pretty color, isn't it? Every now and then I'll mix a color and like fall in, actually fall in love with the color and I'll use it in my painting even if I don't even see it in the reference. <laughs> you know, I always think things are meant to be. If I mixed up that color, it's got to go somewhere if I love it. Ooh, that's really pretty too. And that does look like colors that are in there, that much blue. I don't know if I have enough of it, though. I think I've got to make more of this. I don't quite have enough out. Let me get my... Good morning, Anita. I was just saying I was mixing up really dark darks because you had asked that question about um, how to get your really dark darks for the figs, and I mixed 
um, the Windsor, not Windsor, it's ultramarine violet, magenta, a little bit of black and a little bit of raw umber for that really dark color right there. What white and dark gray did you use for your grays? I used, um, I used titanium white and where's my black? I wanted to keep it right here and I lost it. I tried to organize my colors this morning, but they still don't look very organized. I just put this back in the wrong place. Um, it's, um, what black did I use? Now, wait a minute. Where did I put it? It's got to be right here. Oh, here it is. I used, I like this Rembrandt um, ivory black. is nice and creamy. Now that looks a little too blue, so I'm going to put a little bit of gray in there and neutralize that. Yep, that looks good. And now I want to make it even lighter. I was helping my neighbor, so I'm late. Oh, that's okay. Better late than never, and you can always watch this later if you want to see it. but I love that you're here now. Do a little gray in there. I feel like I don't have a lot of paint out here, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna highlight now I need my greens. Um, so for green, I think I'm gonna take the manganese blue hue. I need more of that. Um, and then I'm going to put a little bit of Caribbean blue. I have Caribbean blue out here and a little bit of, um, lemon yellow. Now that looks a little too, what? I think I'm going to take half of that. I think it looks like the right color, but it's too saturated and too dark. So I'm going to darken this with a little bit of this darker gray. And actually, I think I'm going to put a little bit of black in there because it's that dark in the dark areas of the crate. Of the crate? Is that what it's called? I think it is a crate. And now to lighten this, I'm going to use gray because it's not that bright. I might need to put a little bit more yellow in there. I don't know. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> so if you feel like you have your color kind of really close to what you need, but it looks too, um, <coughs> if it looks too bright, then you can gray it down. I love this because there's some really light areas of the, the box. What's the manufacturer of the Caribbean Blue? It is, I have that right here because I just put it out. Um, You know what? I think it's Old Holland, but no, wait, I really should look because... That's the only company I know of that makes Caribbean blue, and it's such a cool color that I can't find it. Um, that's Payne's Gray. It's one of my tubes that's like all mushed. Oh, maybe here it is. Look, here it is. It's, yeah, it's Old Holland. I'll show you what it really looks like. It's such a pretty color. So here's the Caribbean blue. I'll just mix a little white in there. We could add that in, right? It would look pretty. Such a pretty color, isn't it? So that's the Caribbean blue mixed with white. I'm just going to put that up there. We can use that. Maybe I'll gray that down a little bit too. It's a little bright. <clears throat> All right, now I need white, and I, I 
think I could really just use gray. Um, <clears throat> let me pull my grays down here. I might use this for my shadow area. And then I'll just add white into this and do this. Maybe as my background color. Put that little bit of Caribbean blue in there. It will look pretty. Maybe I should make it just a touch. Um, no, I think that's good. I think that's a good palette. Let's start with that. I feel like I might not have enough paint, but I think I will. We'll see. All right. Let's hope. So there you go. Can you see okay? Let me have a sip of my coffee. What's everybody having? Coffee or tea? <clears throat> so I usually start putting in my darkest areas first. Hazelnut coffee, Ellen. That sounds wonderful. So, um, where are my darkest areas? It's very dark where these two overlap a little bit. I'm going to try to do very intentional deliberate brush strokes and not work my paint together on there. Irma says, coffee good and strong. Haven't slept this night. Oh no, Irma. Sleeping has gotten to be an elusive thing for me lately. Um, oh, and I also, I still have some spots left. I have one spot left for France. Anybody's thinking about going, there's only one room left. And I have a couple spots left for my workshop that's going to be in Kennett Square, which is going to be so much fun. That's coming up the first weekend in March. And Kennett Square is the cutest little town. It's going to be in a beautiful art gallery where I have to show my work. And um, what else? It... It's going to be fun. We're going to go out to dinner one night. It's a Sunday and a Monday. I thought that would work. So in case people need to be at work, they only have to take one day off. Or if people have weekend plans, they only lose one day of their weekend. Um, plus, that's when it worked for the gallery, too. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to paint. I What I'm thinking right now is we're going to paint probably peonies one day and... Um, <clears throat> a bird the second day. So we get a little bit of both. So all that, there's a link in my bio for all the information for that and for France. It's really, I started, I just got my airline tickets. I have to send out an email to everybody who's joining me for that, of what my plans are in case anybody wants to do like the same thing. <clears throat> um, this. Maybe that needs to be a little darker. And this actually has a little shadow over here, too. Oh, I love those colors in there. So pretty. No, Ellen, Mike's not going to France. Um, mm -mm. 
it would be a long time for him to be off work. And, um, no, he's just not going. I have a, a friend who, when I first decided to do this, um, she actually was in my wedding party. I've known her since I was like 20 years old. She's coming, but she's coming from Colorado. So I'm traveling by myself. Plus, that'd be a lot for Mike to be there the whole time with me painting. And I want to be able to concentrate on doing all the fun stuff and not anything else. <clears throat> hmm. It looks really cool, doesn't it? It is a bit of a challenge, though, to think about <clears throat> um, the lights and the darks putting in those I think this is <coughs> I was watching when I first woke up this morning I was watching someone paint with a palette knife and it was it gave me thought about um, painting where you really don't you just make your mark and stop that's what I'm trying to do I get inspired by so many things that I see and sometimes they say, you know, you shouldn't, like, look at other people's art on Instagram or whatever because then you start to copy. But I don't really copy as much as I get inspired of, like, watching how people make brush strokes or <coughs> things like that that make me think, oh, now today I want to try to paint without moving my paint around on the on the board. And you know I do that a lot, but sometimes I forget. goes a little lower right here. <clears throat> I think I'll put some of my white background in. I might need, I'm going to put out a little bit of my liquid because my white just feels a little thick to me. <clears throat> when I have to lay down that much color, I don't like when it feels thick. Does anyone know of a left-handed online artist to watch? Hmm. I don't know. I'm sure there are some. But I don't know. I don't ever think about if people are right or left-handed. Huh. <coughs> Excuse me. I often think I should learn to paint with both hands because I think I'm going to have arthritis in my right hand eventually. <coughs> Oh, is Shelby a left-handed? There you go. Shelby Dillon's left-handed artist. <clears throat> Michael's a lefty, too. Yeah, like after my generation, I think they mostly made everyone be right-handed. Like when I was a kid, I remember the teachers making you switch your pen to your right hand if you naturally wanted to do it with your left hand. But somewhere along the way, they I think they realized it's better. Melissa said both me and my hubby are lefties. Yeah, so is my husband. He's left-handed, but he's he's he writes left-handed, but I think he does everything else right-handed. I forget. Yeah, somewhere along the way, they stopped forcing you to always be a right-handed. And we do have to work on our um, Vasari trip, too. 
I always get around to things eventually, but I get a little overwhelmed sometimes of <clears throat> all the bits to keep up with. I have a theory that lefties are ambidextrous. Oh, probably. Yeah, my husband definitely is. I'm a retired art teacher, and I used to have an assignment for my students to draw with their opposite hand. That's a great idea to do that. I'm getting a smear there. I don't really want the smear, but I love the way this looks in here. So I'm going to just not fuss with it too much. But I discovered I can write neater with my right hand when forced to. Maybe because you're thinking more about your letter forms. I used to always write much neater than I do now. I think I said before, my niece Erin, who lives in Arlington, she... Um, my sister said she always used to try to write like I did because she liked my handwriting. <clears throat> and the funny thing is she ended up going to the same college I did, doing the same thing, graphic design. And when she sends me notes, her handwriting looks just like mine. Mine used to. I would say mine doesn't look neat anymore. It's gotten pretty sloppy. Michael said, I think Brian Mark Taylor may be a lefty too. He's a great, he is a great artist. I think he owns Strata Easel. Oh, does he own that company, Michael? Wow. That's cool. Yes, he is amazing. Hmm. <coughs> okay. So, I have to do more with the box. Does it look wonky? It does a little, but you know what? It looks a little wonky in the image, too. It doesn't really look rectangular. They do get kind of pulled this way and that. quite cover the edge. I don't mind if some of the background isn't covered, but I don't like when it looks like it was an accident. I got a little paint up here to get that. <clears throat> so yeah, I've been busy. I've been working, painted, worked on another, started, I finished a large commission over the weekend and then started an a large painting because I need artwork for all my art shows this year. <clears throat> okay. Um, I still need more dark, dark. So let me do some of this more kind of grayish purple. It really is. It's a lot of darks. There's a little bit of that kind of orangey color in here. Maybe over here. Am I missing anything? Maybe. Melissa, oh, you're a graphic designer. That's what I've done for 30 years. And you're not ambidextrous. I'm not either. I love cool and warm colors. Me too. And I love looking at, like, looking for the little color shifts. And it, it looks like you already, as I like mess, I like the messy figs too. Ellen, what'd you do? The laddie with the large blue... I thought no one was talking to me in here. There were all these notes I missed. Did the laddie with the large blue flowers. Love it. Um, so 
So there's, um, this has a little bit of kind of that bright, there's just a little pig down below there. I'm not sure. This needs to maybe be darker in here. I do love all the colors. love the colors that they are right now, right? I'm having a sip of my coffee. I have to think a little bit. Um, as much as I love all that bright in there, I have to soften that a little bit. I think there's a little, there must be a little piece of dirt or something that I was moving around in there. So that looks very, um, what does it look very? It looks like I need kind of this kind of neutral blue in here, I think. Kind of more of a gray. And then go lighter where the little sh shadow is in there. That's fun. That gave that one dimension, adding that um, little highlight. And I think I could do the same thing right in here. Just for that little bit of highlight on that one in the back. But I have to add a little bit more dark so it defines the shape between the background and the one in the foreground. said this would be fun to paint on a silver leaf panel oh it would wouldn't it i just bought myself one of those you ever see people paint on those copper panels i just bought one it didn't come yet but i'm kind of excited to see what that feels like to paint on on a copper panel i don't know if some of it will show through um i think that'll be fun Okay, doing a lot of thinking. Um, that looks a little wonky here, I think, this edge. needs to move down like that and this edge like that please video painting on copper <laughs> that would be fun to watch okay I hope I bought two because I, I should probably practice before I do it with everybody watching yeah that wouldn't stop me right you'll forgive me if it doesn't turn out that's what I always say so you learn from the ones that work out well, and you learn from the ones that don't. It's all good. Those are some vibrant colors, aren't they? I think I need to quiet this one down a little bit. It's a little too blue. It's got too much sass. Um, greens, the reds. What time is it? 45. Oh, still. Good morning, Lori Stahl. How are you? Good 
morning sunshine. colors it's always a dance too between like like having it I don't want to cover up all the little kind of magical mistakes in there can you ever have too much sass I don't think so Ellen no nope, not possible do love a little sass in my art no such thing Allie says, your words always stick with, stuck with me. One time when I wrote, because I felt like I had wasted time on a cat commission that went bad, you said, it's never a waste of time because you learn from it. Yes, absolutely. Always. And you'll always be learning. It, like That's something I've learned <laughs> in life and in art that it it's never going to change. You, like It's always going to be like you get two steps forward, one step back. You keep learning new things, but then there are new lessons to learn. So you never arrive at that point where it's like, yep, I figured it all out. My mother-in-law teaches me that all the time because she always says to me, oh, that was hard. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're not done yet, so it's still going to be hard. I love all those colors. Malaysia. Hello to Malaysia. And that's the fun thing of art is, too, that it's you're always learning from it. I always say, too, I'm always learning life lessons from it, too. About patience. Patience is one of the biggest lessons I'm always learning from my art. All right, it's time to get serious here and go in and add some some highlights. Not be afraid. Like I say, too, if you get spots in your painting and you're afraid of it, like then just dive in and work on it because you got to get through the scary bits. Always learning makes every day interesting. It sure does. <laughs> what would be more fun to learn than this? And this is much lighter right in here. Now I'm just looking for my lightest light areas. As we come toward the finish line, what I have 10 minutes. Oh, there's a little opening right there. I missed that. a spit. I, mean, I need a sip of my coffee. I need to think. Now, where else do I have light areas that I don't want to miss? Definitely on my main, both here, right here. And that looks a little misshapen right here. 
Sometimes it does get a little tricky with a bigger paintbrush. Larger, not bigger, right? So you can always carve back in. I felt like that was a little something, a little wrong in shape. That's better. Okay. Um, I should be very, very dark right here. And right here. there um a what size brush cheryl this is a trakel what is it number 16 it's a spectrum 3000 b bright oh <laughs> i'm reading it through the thing and oh i can't even show you it's not zooming in correctly but yeah trakel number 16 spectrum 3000 b bright um You're welcome. That should be dark right in here. See anything I'm missing? Um, I should go a little more orange, I think, in here. There really are oranges in there. And this looks a little too harsh. Just gonna soften that edge a little bit just by going back over it. <clears throat> and this could go a little darker in here. Um, all right, what am I missing? There's a little reflection, just the tiniest bit down in here that gives that a little definition. <clears throat> There's just a little bit there. Um, that does have that line, but this made that a little too harsh right there. So I'm gonna soften that. And then this is the part where you can go back and forth and adjust it forever, but if it's not improving your painting, then I always say it's time to stop. Um, oh, that helped. Um, now where are my very lightest lights? I have one right here. Here and that and definitely this is light. What do I think? Do I have enough darks, lights? Is something popping too much? Anything I need to push back more. I love how loose that one is. I love how loose they all are. That's always what I'm aiming for. And then I get to this point and I think, mm, is it too loose? No. Nope. Let's just add a little bit of that fun blue that I made. The Caribbean blue. Oh, that's fun. They seem
seem pretty similar to me, but they both have different bristles. Oh, you're talking. Oh, I saw. Say, oh, are you really liking them? So you got um, Brian Mark Taylor set from Traquel. Hmm. Well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, my my brushes are getting a little tired, so I do need to invest in something. And I love my rosemaries. I love all my brushes, but I need new ones. They do get tired. All right. All right. Time to put the brush down. Um, no, wait, I need just this edge. All right. It's not getting better, so I'm going to stop and sign it. fun was that? Okay, so there's my reference image. Whoops. And then there is, let me see if I can zoom in so you can see bits of all the colors going on in there. And then here is a very simple palette. Not really all that many colors. Um, and I didn't mix anything new, so that's all that I used. So I love when that um, the background colors come through like that and, and add to it. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me. If you want to be on my newsletter and you're not already, if you don't get my newsletter, just send me um, a message and I will add you. I will add this to my YouTube channel. And if you go there, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. Um, let me see if anybody else has questions. Michael said, reach out to Rosemary and see if you can do a set of brushes for people to buy. Oh my gosh, that would be fun. I should do that. Good idea. Never bought figs. Oh, you know what? And figs are so good. They really are really good. So good to eat, I mean. Um, amazing, all the colors in there. It adds so much depth. I miss all this. Thank you for doing these. I just love to watch it before work. Good. I hope you have a wonderful day. So thanks for coming, guys. I hope you have a great day. We'll do it again next week. And I will put the reference image up on the blog part of my website. Um, and if you want to come join me at Square Pair Gallery, you can come paint with me. It'd be very fun. So good to see you guys. Have a great day. Bye.